Hello everyone in this video let us take a look at uh, capacity report in uh, portfolio for Jira. So we have been uh, learning quite a lot about uh, portfolio for Jira and uh, there is a specific report called uh, capacity report. So I wanted to spend some time on this report because this report is uh, really something that uh, will help you in uh, planning your work, forecasting your work uh, in the next uh, few weeks or maybe months. So in the previous video, we spent some time looking at uh, the baselining capabilities of portfolio for Jira where we learn how to set the target dates and uh, how to also visualize it on uh, the timeline. In this video, we are going to discuss uh, how to do this, uh, how to take a look at the capacity reports when you're looking at uh, the live plans, where you have the option to view the capacity of a team or maybe a person. You also have the option to take a look at uh, the bottlenecks. So, We'll see how it, how it looks like uh, when we look at the report in the life plan. If you are using the new improved uh, interface, you must be wondering whether there is a possibility of uh, this capacity report. Well, in the new improved interface, uh, there are some uh, some possibilities when it comes to understanding the capacity of your uh, of your plan of uh, your specific uh, team members maybe so you have the option to take a look at the sprint capacity and you also have the option to take a look at the team capacity so this uh, is not exactly same as uh, the live plan but you do have some capabilities so let us see how it looks like for both the live plan and the improved plan in the uh, tool so if you are looking at your uh, your live plan which is uh, the old version of portfolio you can go to the uh, reports and uh, there is a report called as capacity report so if you look at the capacity report you have the option to basically uh, look at uh, uh, different uh, options here so right now if you notice you have uh, these teams listed here on uh, your uh, uh, I mean, basically, if this it's like a swim lane. So basically, for each and every team, uh, per sprint, you can take a look at their capacity. So, for example, for Team Android, for uh, OL, OL Sprint 2, you can see here that uh, the free capacity is uh, uh, 21 points and uh, the plant capacity is only 9 points. So you can clearly do more work if you want for this particular sprint and uh, you have the option to of course take a look at uh, this uh, for maybe future sprints as well so when you're looking at uh, your uh, your teams and uh, uh, sprints you can also take a look at the bottleneck so this can be really useful so if you're looking at uh, team android you can see here that the bottleneck is uh, java but of course it can be different so if you change the the uh, options here so right now the line here is global but if you change it to project you can see that you have a different view which is of course uh, quite similar to the old view but here you can see that uh, the overall line here will show you this capacity information per project so as you can see that in between there is no work happening for sprint 3 uh, there is basically a gap so it is not really something that you want but maybe it depends on how your schedule is uh, planned if you look at your if i if i look at my plan there is certainly a gap in between so maybe this is something that you are okay with or maybe you want to maybe make this gap a bit smaller maybe you want some buffer in between so you can do that but uh, the rep the report will uh, reflect you uh, will reflect the same thing for you so um, you can see here that right now we are looking at this report per project on the uh, on the line here and you have a similar information you can see the uh, plant capacity for uh, different sprints and uh, if you change it to person you have the same information but of course you can see here for a specific uh, resource in your uh, 
uh, plan. So right now I'm looking at uh, Charlie's uh, capacity in the in the OAL sprint, which is uh, right now. Uh, um, I mean the utilization is hundred percent, but uh, it may not be the case for everyone. For example, Abdul is uh, only. Um, I mean Abdul can definitely do more work in this sprint. So it it is something that can be useful if you are planning your work planning your work and the good thing is that you have the timeline view as well so you can always uh, monitor what is happening uh, on a timeline uh, which is something i believe is uh, desirable and if you uh, go to the scope you can change the view from schedule to capacity so you, ha you have a similar information here displayed at uh, different levels so right now uh, we are looking at uh, the capacity for uh, the teams and uh, if you change the level on top you can uh, see here the list of issues so this is something that can be useful if you are uh, basically monitoring your uh, plan and at the same time you also want to take a look at the issues so you can do this uh, at your scope view as well now if i go back to my uh, reports let us see what all we can do here so we have the option to uh, change the line to project or maybe keep it as global. So if you select project here, uh, the same information will be displayed for uh, the first project and then second project. And of course, the timeline will also show you the same thing. So if I change it back to the global, I can see this timeline, which is showing me the releases from all the projects. And I can change it to team again, I can change it to none. So that uh, I don't really worry about uh, the details. But you have some options here when it comes to doing capacity management. And the good thing is that you have the, you have the ability to uh, plan this or balance out the work that you will be doing or you can potentially do in coming sprints. So this is really great in the life plan. Let us take a look at the improved interface. So when you look at the improved interface, uh, you do have uh, this view called as, uh, uh, I mean, it is not really, the name, of the, the name of the view is something that I gave to my plan. But if I switch to the basic view, uh, this is something that I'm sure you are familiar with. But if you go to the view settings, you have the option to, to group by this uh, view based on either team or sprint so when you are selecting either team or sprint you can uh, take a look at the capacity as well so let us uh, switch the view to um to sprint here and when you do this you can take a look at all these sprints that you have and right now of course you have the same um, hierarchy that you may want to monitor but the good thing is that uh, while you're looking at your sprints you can take a look at uh, the uh, information for that particular uh, sprint uh, for example for this particular sprint you can see here that uh, uh, my uh, capacity is uh, definitely I mean uh, out of uh, 30 story points the allocation is done for only 12 so it is an active sprint which is right now running but you can have uh, your future sprints here uh, as well in the in, in this in this particular report this report is uh, not exactly like uh, the report where you have uh, uh, the view for each and every resource in your team but i think this is not bad I, and i believe and i hope that portfolio uh, will i mean more features will be added in uh, this particular uh, uh, report uh, you can always uh, you know pull in your uh, assignee here if you want to take a look at uh, uh, you know the people who are assigned to this particular uh, activity when you're looking at uh, these uh, issues but this grouping will give you some idea about uh, the allocation you have a similar view where you can uh, switch to you can switch the grouping to team now again uh, this is uh, something similar to uh, the old view but again it is uh, showing you the teams here on the grouping i mean on the uh, on the left hand side so this can also work but uh, 
don't try to compare it with the old uh, view where you have the option to uh, take a look at uh, what is happening uh, um, for each and every resources you all, always have the option to add your column your assigning column so when you're looking at this report you can always uh, take a look at the assignee of that particular activity but uh, uh, this view is still not bad in my opinion and hopefully in future you may see um, I mean if, if it Lushion decides to add or include the same report maybe you will have a similar report like uh, this one where you have uh, a very clear in indication of uh, uh, who is over allocated and who is under allocated so let us see uh, how it goes uh, with uh, the new improved interface and uh, um, I'm hoping I guess uh, portfolio uh, the new improved interface will have uh, more improvements in uh, reporting capabilities so in the next uh, video uh, we will take a look at uh, how to configure the non-working days uh, at the plan level in portfolio for uh, Jira and this is something that I probably missed uh, when I was working on uh, the um, I mean I did mention it uh, when you configure a, configure a plan you have the option to to set the non-working days but uh, let us sit let, let us take a look at uh, how to configure it at the plan level so that uh, those non-working days are excluded when it comes to scheduling of uh, your activities uh, using portfolio for Jira. So I hope you found this uh, video useful and you learned something new today. Thank you very much.